Hi folks, well this is a first for me, recording in the bathroom because I'm traveling at the moment and I only have one Nikon Z9 with me, otherwise I'd be able to film myself and be holding the other one as I talk you through this new update. A lot of you would know if you haven't seen it already, seen my recent update video, I'm back home taking care of, a, well not taking care of, but in the middle of a family situation. So I'm pretty much offline. Nikon have just updated firmware 4.0 for the Z9. And typically I would have got this ahead of time, done all of the testing and be able to bring you the new features in detail. And I would have my Nikon setup guide already updated with all of the updates, how to make the most of them. So people who bought that course have instant access to it. As it is, I will get to updating the a full course in a couple of days time. If you saw the last video that is currently on sale along with every single course that I have at my learn.mattgranger site and at my portraiture site, you can see all of the details from that below. Most of them are 50% off, a couple of them are 20% off. Now, this firmware update I think does three things and apologies if I come across as a sycophant, but I think in the mirrorless world, depending on your needs, of course, because if you're looking for, you know, for some people, a, a medium format will be best for some, an APS-C will be best for some, Sony does things that no one else can or can, and, but in a general playing field, the Z9 is certainly among the best mirrorless cameras. If you're a Nikon shooter, without a doubt, the best camera that Nikon has ever released. Now, I think this firmware update does a couple of things. One, it just provides new features and improved features, which is what a firmware update should do. Two, it sets this out, I think now, as kind of unquestionably the best integrated grip, full size, full frame mirrorless camera on the market. And I think it more clearly steps the Z8 and the Z9 apart, because as we go through the list of different features here, you'll note this has some brand new and really cool features added that are not available in the Z8, and it has not added some features that the Z8 has that this doesn't. So I think they are putting a wedge between the two cameras so that they don't offer exactly the same features. Let's run through what they are. Now to update the software, you can check the link below. It's a free download. Just open up the download file, get the bin file, put that onto the root of your CF Express card, pop it into the camera and then into the menu, update firmware, it just took a couple of minutes. Now the first thing which I think is insanely cool, they've added a feature called auto capture and this works for stills and for video. Now there's three different criteria that you can use to work through this. One is motion, so you can set up the camera and as soon as it detects motion, you can even uh, tell it which direction the motion should be. It will either start shooting in the settings that you've programmed or it will start recording video in the settings that you've set it up for. You can also do it based on distance. So you could say, for example, between five to 10 meters from camera, that's where when something gets into that range, pick it up and start shooting it. So great for if you're shooting like a race and you want someone just as they cross the finish line or just as they cross a certain marker. And then another which will be based on subjects. So you can have it detect people or animals or vehicles. And when it detects one of those, it will start firing. And perhaps the coolest thing, and this requires some real processing power, you can combine all three of them. So you can say, if an animal comes in, that's moving in this direction and it's between this and this distance away, then I want you to shoot. So just imagine what this opens up in terms of being able to do remote shooting or to have, sorry, second shooters, but to replace, uh, to, to have, be able to shoot one angle yourself and have the camera take care of the other. It's really pretty incredible and I can't think of another camera that offers a feature like that. It's not something you're gonna use all the time unless you're, shooting those kind of things that I just described, in which case this could be absolutely the kind of feature that sets this camera apart from the competition. And I rarely say that there's any need to switch brands, but if you were shooting uh, action scenes for movies, for example, on your Sony or Canon, and you've got different cameras rigged up and you have to remote trigger them and stuff, having the camera be able to do that could be just about enough for you to completely switch systems, I reckon.
It's also got new video features. So one in shooting in RAW, the base ISO before was 800. Now it allows you to get to low two mode. So simulating ISO 200 kind of exposure, which gives you better shadow detail, but also much easier to control your shooting when you're shooting in you know bright situations. And then for the high res zoom, which is so cool, basically you can have it do a two times digital zoom without losing quality whilst you're filming, they've added a bunch of new speeds. So it was either, I think there was only three speeds, slow, medium, and fast. Now there's 11, so you can really dial in how quickly you want that zoom to be applied if you use that kind of a feature. Next up, we finally have what we've heard about, the customizable shutter sound. So there's five different sounds and different levels of volume. I'm sorry, but no, you can't program it to be a cat meowing or something like that. They're predefined. To do that, I will have to record it on my iPhone because I'm traveling with just one camera, but here are the five sounds. Next one, pre-release buffer, and this is epic. So before this camera was offering you that you could be all set up ready to shoot if you had pre-release on, that when you're already focused down with your finger on the trigger but not engaging the trigger yet, you could program it to up to, I think it was 30 seconds. Uh, once you hit the shutter, it would have captured all of that before that. So let's say you're waiting for someone to walk in the door and they all the yell surprise at a birthday party. So you're at the door, you're waiting for the person to walk in, you look away, they come in, you missed just as they walk in or a better example may be that someone's going to do a proposal and you missed as they started to go on their knee but you wanted to get to the whole sequence. Here, once you hit record, it will start recording from that point on, but also the 30 seconds before. But now they're letting you do that up to 300 seconds. So if you're capturing things like lightning strikes or things where it's really a little bit unpredictable, that's gonna really open it up. One thing that a lot of people were wanting though that this hasn't brought in is pre-release capture for RAW. Another great thing, this was, until the Z8, the only Z camera that had 3D autofocus tracking, something that, you know, was really sorely missed from the Z6s and Z7s from, from us that were shooting DSLRs. Um, they've now brought in further enhancements that are meant to improve that for really erratic subjects. I already find it pretty good and with practice almost flawless, but improvements are always welcome. And they've added a new red focus box option, which can be helpful depending on what it is that you're actually shooting. There are actually a whole bunch more features here. Let me just run you through some of them. But if you haven't already, if you're in the Z system, check out my setup guide. I'll run you through all of them in more detail there. It also takes you through the Z8 and every single camera in the range, what every button on every camera does. And it's broken down by camera. So let's say you want to learn about the Z6 Mark II. You learn all the different buttons on that, all the different ways you can set it up and customize it out of the box, including a quick setup PDF for that camera. And then a deep dive on all the menu options that Z cameras offer and how you can make the most of them. So they've also added a delay on the shutter button so that you line up, you take the shot, and then you can say, tell it to just pause half a second or a second every time so that your hand is off the camera when the shutter actually goes off. Much finer increments for bracketing by aperture, now 1.3, 1 1.5, 1.7, 2.3, 2.5, and 2.7, rather than just full stops. Um, you can assign custom functions to even more buttons now for stills and for video and for playback. As I said, the 3D tracking, you can change it from white to red. They're saying improved uh, metering accuracy for shooting interval shots, which is great. I'm gonna be doing some of that in the next month or two as well as support for some new lenses and some different things. So some other minor things there as well. That's version 4.0 within 18 months of the camera being announced. Camera companies like Fuji have always done a great job of providing updates, but I can't think of any camera that one added so many features comparing what this came with to what it has now, 8.3K 8 8 60 RAW with high res zoom and da 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 da. Um, 
let alone one that already started out good and then was just using firmware updates to get exceptional. Often when a lot of firmware updates are done, it's because stuff was missing, stuff didn't work very well when it first came out. Z9's firmware updates really wasn't about addressing bugs, it's just knocking it into the park, out of the park, and giving you brand new capabilities in a camera. Now, as I said, this does put a line between it and the Z8 more squarely. They said that the subject detect auto capture is going to come to Z8 soon, but not yet. But I would say that the skin softening and that kind of thing is going to be a Z8 option. And a lot of these other features are going to, like more video features are going to stay more Z9 oriented, which makes sense. The D850 and now the Z8 have traditionally been more portrait oriented cameras. And this, whilst being an integrated grip that's traditionally meant sports, is an absolute workhorse of a video camera that blows everything out of the water at this price point. And please, to those of you in the comments who say, oh, if you care so much about video features, you should go and buy a video camera. Either you don't shoot video, and I'm sorry, you don't know what you're talking about, or you do shoot video, but you just have a very different take on it. This is a video camera. If this shot no stills, this would still be a bargain at five and a half thousand dollars for the video capabilities. If you only shoot stills, it's a bargain for five and a half thousand dollars as well, but putting them both together, there's nothing that comes close to this. See all the details below. If you're looking at picking up any of my courses, now's a great time. They are on sale for the rest of July. Leave me any questions or comments. Thank you for the overwhelming support and kind messages I've got on my previous video about my family situation. I'm sorry, I just can't reply to them all because my family time is more important than my replying to comments at the moment, but I do read as many as I can and I really appreciate it. Cheers guys, I will see you soon. And it's starting to feel a bit weird standing here in the bathroom talking to a mirror, so I gotta go. I've never blown a kiss to camera before, anyway.